Good evening, I'm Shogun Mohammed, and this is the 7 o'clock news. Yemeni armed forces aided by the Arab coalition fighter jets in Yemen restored control over several positions and facilities in Yemen. A military source said the army units combined the mills roundabout and nearby areas before launching an attack that allowed them to seize control over the Red Sea Mills Company and all its facilities. The battles in Hodeida's northeastern and southern neighborhoods killed at least 23 Houthis. 14 Houthis handed themselves over, while dozens of Houthi commanders and fighters left Hodeida towards Sana'a and Hajjah. The Yemeni forces advanced to come closer to the Hodeida port, which is less than four kilometers away. The Houthis are losing control of several areas in Hodeida after a comprehensive military operation launched by the National Army and Resistance Forces was launched in recent days. Hodeida, Yemen's biggest Red Sea port and the only one under Houthi control, serves as the lifeline for the majority of Yemen's population. In an effort to place pressure on Yemen's Houthi terrorist militias, which are aligned with Iran, the U.S. is considering designating them as a terrorist organization. Sources familiar with the discussions told the Washington Post anonymously the matter has been discussed periodically since at least 2016, but has received renewed examination in recent months as the White House seeks to stake out a tough stance on Iranian-linked groups across the Middle East. Amnesty International had accused Yemen's Houthis on Thursday of deliberate militarization of hospitals in the battleground city of Hodeida and called for the protection of civilians. The human rights group said the Houthi militias recently stationed militiamen on the roof of a hospital in the May 22 district of the Red Sea port city, calling the action a stomach-churning development. The United States warned foreign countries not to allow Iranian oil tankers into their territorial waters or ports, saying such access may run afoul of U.S. sanctions and not only incur penalties, but also result in catastrophic economic and environmental damage should an accident occur. The State Department reminded global shipping and insurance industries that the warning is part of the U.S. maximum pressure campaign to get Iran to change its behavior, ensuring Iranian tankers will now incur penalties under U.S. sanctions reinstate this week. The sanctions that came into force Monday targeting Iran's energy, financial and shipping sectors and marking the end of U.S. participation in the 2015 nuclear deal that President Donald Trump withdrew from in May. Now that our sanctions on the Iranian regime have been reimposed, we want to alert nations of the risk of doing business with Iran's shipping sector. If Iranian tankers make calls to your ports or transit through your waterways, this comes at great risk. The United States urges you to consider the advisory we are issuing today. A car bomb blast near a restaurant in Iraq's northern city of Mosul yesterday evening killed at least five people and wounded 14 others, the first such attack since the ouster of the ISIS terrorist group from the city last year. Mosul police officials said the car bomb blast in front of a restaurant in West Mosul wounded nine others. Mosul was recaptured by Iraqi forces from ISIL in a violent eight-month battle in 2017 with the support of the U.S. military. Iraq is facing a spate of bombings and kidnappings in recent months that has raised concerns about security. UN Libya envoy Ghassan Salama told the UN Security Council yesterday that Libya should start the process to hold a national vote in a spring 2019 after a national conference to discuss the country's conflict. While violence and a deadlock between rival Libyan administrations had made that goal unrealistic, the Salama sixth UN envoy since 2011 said he wants to focus on a national conference to give Libyans a forum to discuss their future and bridge decisions between armed groups, tribes, town and regions. Western powers in the United Nations had originally hoped to hold national elections on December 10th, but violence and a deadlock between rival administrations had made that goal unrealistic.